we all work together in, in some fashion um, as data providers, data consumers, analysts, um, along the, the data value chain in, in, in pharmaceuticals. So there's a lot of value from, from partnerships and a lot of value from having the right client. Maybe we can go down the, 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 the panel again and, um, and for each explain what role do partnerships play at your company um, to advance, uh, I think we're, we're all in real world evidence, uh, but also um, integration of new and sophisticated methodologies around AI and ML. And uh, are there any collaborations or alliances that have significantly enhanced your ability to generate insights for, for your decision makers? I can tell you that because you're all on my panel, you've all added value to my business, <laughs> which I really appreciate. Uh, but uh, over to you, Sanjeev. Well, th thank you, Sandy. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, you know, as, as Andy mentioned and, you know, um, Julie and, and Wendy as well, I mean, we partner very closely with our data providers. I mean, Health Verity is one of the major data providers for us uh, right now. I mean, if you think about in the US, uh, we are running about a $30 billion business across all the therapeutic areas. I'm just talking about uh, the pharmaceutical business in, in the US. And you know, to drive the decisions, to just find those healthcare accounts that I mentioned, the hospitals or the doctors, at that precision level, you need data, you need the accurate data. And, and it's just not just one single set of data, you need multiple sources of data to be able to get to that level of uh, insights. And again, you know, Health Verity is, is a great partner to us. Um, we do leverage a lot of multiple data sources. And again, Health Verity provides us that m marketplace. But then, you know, there are other data sources that's coming from Viva, that's coming from Symphony, um, that's coming from now the digital space as well. I mean, we're starting to push the envelope uh, on the digital side, especially with this digital health precision medicine sort of kicking in. How do we sort of leverage the data? And for us, the, the competitive advantage comes from which data providers can blend this data for us in the most sort of appropriate way so that we can get to that uh, you know, precise patient and also the patient journey um, uh, very, very, very accurately. Um, you know, Wendy talked about the speed and the agility. That's the other thing sort of we look at where how do we make sure that, you know, if it takes, if it used to take us three months to get the insights on these patients or these doctors, how can we do that in a week's time? And that's where we're leveraging a lot of the technology. You know, again, the cloud platforms are, are really helping us in, in harnessing that level of compute power and, and, and the speed that uh, which, which uh, we can uh, get these insights. On the generative AI, I mean, we've heard a lot of conversations on, on AI and specifically around generative AI. I mean, my point of view is that, you know, pharmaceutical companies usually are laggards in this space, I mean, in adopting these technologies. And then, so I, we are seeing that. I mean, we are running about 100, uh, uh, proof of concepts right now in Johnson & Johnson uh, related to generative AI, we haven't really seen that level of uptake, whether it's drug discovery or you know, any, any kind of uh, sort of commercial sales and marketing applications just yet. Um, we also have a lot of skeptics uh, you know, in the space where is it really going to work? So we're going through that hump, you know, the, that uphill battle, if you will, um, I am optimistic that we'll, we'll cross that because I see a lot of potential in the generative AI use cases, but again, you know, we're, we're still in, in its infancy when it comes to, um, uh, comes to generative AI. Great, thank you. Uh, Julia, what makes for a good data set or vendor to, um, to participate on the Earnest platform and what makes for a good Earnest client? Yeah, absolutely. So from a, obviously our business model really hinges on partnerships. We don't generate any data in house for the most part. And so we are sourcing data from third party companies. Um, and when we think about like high quality partnerships, obviously we're looking for data sets that in themselves are really high quality. So data sets that are attribute rich, that are low latency, um, that are just 
providing a lot of differentiated value to financial services um, that are covering a really broad range of products, so breadth of coverage really matters. Um, but we're also looking for high quality partners in themselves, and so obviously healthcare data is really complicated, and we found that um, sometimes there are companies that have really excellent data but don't have strong data teams and understanding of their own data and the ability to kind of like collaboratively work together to generate the best product possible. So we're looking at looking for generally like partners who have a high willingness to kind of collaboratively work on bringing to market a product that we think is going to really resonate. Um, and so yeah, that's when we think about good partnerships. We're obviously looking for the best in class data sets and then we're also looking for partners that are willing to build a really strong relationship in, in bringing those products to market. Um, and then as it relates to good clients, um, obviously we're, I think generally there's just a really wide range of levels of sophistication within the clients that we're working with. On the one hand, we have platform funds that have huge in-house data efforts and are really sophisticated and they're really deep in the weeds of the data. We're learning a lot of things about the data from them because of their level of sophistication is so high. Um, and, and that in a lot of ways can be a really great client. And then on the very opposite end of the spectrum, we have um, much smaller funds that might be very healthcare specific, don't have in-house in data expertise, but have a very deep domain understanding. And we're learning a lot, getting a real pulse on what's most topical in the healthcare industry because they have really interesting investment theses and a really strong understanding of the landscape. And so that's also a great client. And so I think like what a, what a strong client looks like, it, it, it really ranges um, from the less data sophisticated, smaller funds, but that have really interesting theses to the, to the most sophisticated. Thank you. Wendy? What makes for a good data source for your 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 regulatory grade real world evidence, and what makes for a good client? All clients are good clients. Uh, <laughs> we're not going to turn away any clients, Sandy. Um, no, no. I think. Look, what makes for a good partner? I'm going to echo everything that that Julia said. I, Quality might mean something different here and there, right? We um, need a good strategic fit in our business. Frankly, I don't need eight different open claims data sets that have all of the same data, right? But I do have customers that are going to want um, both the very deep clinical data and something more broad. So I am looking to gather, I am looking to put a partner ecosystem together that is diverse, that provides the coverage and can go very deep when needed. Um, and look, I, I think that when we think about what makes for a good anything, we're always going to come back to a platform framework and platform thinking. The idea here is bring everyone together around um, a platform that has the agility, the flexibility, the elasticity to support your scale, to support the data that you need when you need it, the different analytic applications for your that can produce results for the different stakeholders at the right time, right? And so that it's the match of the flexibility, the agility, the scale, the velocity, but it comes down to bringing everything together, understanding what you're asking, be intentional about asking it, understand fit for purpose. One data set, one analytic tool does not solve everything. Just work together to solve it from there. Andrew? Sure. Um, so as a marketplace, we sit between the buyer and the supplier. And we need to make sure that we have really strong partnerships that are bi-directional. So in terms of the earlier question about Seeking Alpha, our role is to develop the most sophisticated relationships and partnerships with the data owners who are gonna be licensing data through the platform and allowing that uh, synthesis to take place, the synchronization of the data, because the rising tide for each data provider makes everybody's data ultimately more valuable. As a marketplace, we ourselves don't do any analytics at all. We sort of treat ourselves like Switzerland, and that's why you hear us talking about data being distributed and analyzed through an ATON or through an Ernest, or ultimately even through a Janssen, because in the case of Janssen, where the amount of data that they're consuming is so large, we're actually building custom cohort building tools to help them find signal faster, maybe faster than they can even process on their own, to then feed more sophisticated and more narrow data cohorts into the work that's happening in the MLAI side, right? So depending on the type of customer and the, the go-to-market, we'll identify best-in-class analytics partners to be able to take that data and actually turn it into something far more valuable, the information that you can make better decisions upon. 
that's how we think about it, Sandy.